Hello fellow duelists, this is Shadow of the Moon and welcome to part two of my Yu-Gi-Oh! Progression series, the GX era. So I am really happy to be doing this. I actually have not done this in about two years. I took a break or so because I, you know, thought that it was going to be the end of it. But I guess, you know, been getting some inspiration to actually uh, do a GX deck profile, start doing that and actually going through the entire series uh, just by rewatching GX, rewatching a lot of stuff that had to do with it. And just thought it would be really fun to be able to give you more of like a history. Um, with that being said, how this, th how these videos are going to be formatted and how the routine is going to be basically is going to be, I'm not going to be talking about the reprint sets. I'm not going to be talking about the tins uh, because those are just extended sets. I'm going to be doing basically meat and potatoes, the bread and butter of the, as you will, as the, of the actual sets. And that is the core set and the uh, structure decks. Because structure decks are a great way for many players, new players, old players, to be able to get reprints of cards that are very sought after and otherwise were hard to find at the time. And that even goes true even now. Um, so I'm going to be doing it based off of that. And I hope that you enjoy. So I am going to be showing you examples and my binder. I've got examples. I'm, uh, I've been collecting cards from each set. So I'm going to be showing you that throughout the progression series. And I'm also going to be doing something a little different this time. Uh, I'm going to be doing it set up to where it's basically based off of the format of the uh, the ban list. So if th this set came out in August of 2005, then basically I'm going to be doing the set. Uh, I'm going to be doing the ban list in October of 2005. So it's going to be a month long span before the next set comes up to where it would have been. You know, this is the legal format of the set. Um, so without any further ado, let's go ahead and get straight on into it. So first off, this is called Cybernetic Revolution. It came out in August of 2005. Oh, I forgot to mention, if you're ever interested in any of these videos, please, please, I implore you, I beg you, go check out Janjo Zone's video channel, his YouTube channel. He is an amazing YouTube historian. He's got a Yu-Gi-Oh! historian. He's got a lot of great videos, and I actually took a lot of inspiration from his videos uh, because he's very, very informative. He does his research, so I will be posting a link on that in the description below. So, Yu-Gi-Oh! GX uh, Cybernetic Revolution came out in August of 2005. And uh, it really, like, as it said, it was a revolution of sorts. It propelled Yu-Gi-Oh! into the next era, the GX era, the next generation. And all the cards that were would be eventually in the October 2005 ban list, Pot of Greed, Gears of Charity, Delinco Duo, Mirror Force, Black Luster Soldier, Envoy of the Beginning, those would all be gone. And it would be a kind of a fresh format, if you will, a fun format after the Golden Age. But it's also referred to as a different format, and that is the Reaper format. It's considered the Reaper format because Reaper, Spirit Reaper was the main card in the set. So, if you don't know what Spirit Reaper is, Spirit Reaper is a measly 300, uh, 300 attack, 200 defense monster that has an amazing effect that it cannot be destroyed by battle. Unfortunately, if it does get targeted, it is automatically destroyed, but... It also rips cards out of the hand by attacking if it attacks directly, um, if it attacks and attacks your opponent directly. So this little bugger was very, 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 you know, not only sought after, but it was also a very important factor in this actual format because this was the main card. The spirit, the Reaper format, it lasted for three sets all the way up until April of 2006. So now we are going from August 2005 to the set. So now I'm going to be doing from that to October 2005 to all the way to April 2006. So this will be October 2005 ban list format that I'm going to be showing you. So hopefully you'll be able to see how great this format was and it offered a lot of different variety in it. All right, so without any further ado, let's go ahead and dive straight on into finally the Red Eyes Black Dragon GX deck profile. And like I said before in the other video, I just wanted to say thank you so much uh, to all my subscribers and everybody that watches these channels. You rock. Thank you so much. I cannot believe I'm almost at 400. That's like, that blows my mind because this is just meant to be a small channel, a fun channel, just something that casual for people who are budget duelists that just want to, you know, play the game and have fun and everything. It's, this is definitely the place to be and I just would not be here without you. So thank you very much. So, first off, we're going to be starting off, obviously, with the Red Eyes Black Dragons. Um, I'm going to be going based off of the deck list of this past, uh, of the format 
They came out during the time. You've got your three red eyes black dragons. Obviously, this is the bread and butter of the deck. This is meat potatoes. This is what you're going to be using most of the time. And then I'm going to be using only two of the red eyes black chick because you do not want to draw into this. And since I'm not using metamorphosis anymore, this card isn't as consistent. It's mainly in here to be searched for using Mystic Tomato and then bringing out your red eyes black dragon. But it still is a very good card nonetheless. And then we're going to be playing, I'm going to be showing you all the dark types first. So then we're going to be playing three Mystic Tomatoes. This is your main floater. This is the searcher of the deck. Mystic Tomato is an amazing card. This is what's going to help you get into your, your chick, get into your dark types, your other cards that are in here and everything. And this is also worked off the Chaos format. I do have Chaos Sorcerer in here because Chaos Sorcerer was very, very, you know, important in this format. Uh, this that was kind of the main boss monster in a lot of people's decks at the time. This is uh, Red Eyes, or not, since this is a Red Eyes deck, I'm focusing on Red Eyes, but I am still using Chaos Sorcerer. All right, so then we have Breaker of the Magical Warrior. This is here to destroy your opponent's back row. Um, back row removal is still very important in this format because you do not have Mirror Force, you don't have Ring of Destruction, but you do have a lot of Sekratsu Armor. You've got Widespread Ruin, you've got Compulse, you've got a lot of one one of battle traps and it's very important to be able to have that in this set because otherwise you're going to have a heck of a time being able to get through anything and then we have new doria which is a great searcher for um uh great searcher for mystic tomato because this automatically gets uh, destroys the monster when it gets destroyed by battle and sent to the graveyard so it's a great way to kind of like float into it and then your opponent if they end up attacking it they end up getting destroyed then obviously you have your sangin this is to help search for a lot of your monsters in the deck it is a dark type so it does work very well with it and then we have your Spirit Reaper, which is the main cause of the deck. This little booger is amazing and actually it has a lot of, it has hand destruction advantage. Kind of like a mini Donzalug that gets under like Trap Hole and Bottomless and all that stuff. So it's very important in the format. This is Reaper format, so that's why it's called that. And then lastly, for the dark types, we are having none other than Chaos Sorcerer. So you got Chaos Sorcerer. This guy is um, going to be amazing uh because this guy's mainly used in here for the removal face up monster removes it once per turn just by banishing a light and dark monster from the graveyard it can be special summon like that and then we're going to be moving on to the light side so obviously it's called cybernetic revolution and do not fret i will be showcasing the cards and talking about it more and stuff right after the deck profile i did forget to do that so cyber dragon was revolutionary because if your opponent controlled a monster and you didn't you could special summon this card from your hand and this made it deadly because you could get an additional summon you could either tribute this for a monarch or you can normal summon an additional monster and have two beaters on the field at the exact same time and yeah it was very 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 impressive and this really propelled you to get to the next generation this is why it's called it's Yu Gi gx then we have dd warrior lady and blade knight Blade Knight was in here because it gave, became a 2,000 beater if you had one or less cards in your hand. I believe that's what it is. One or less cards in your hand. Yeah, this card gains 500, 400 attack. And then if you control no other monsters, it gave the effects of flip monsters. So he was a way to kind of get rid of, like, Magician of Faith, Magical Merchant, you know, uh, Gravekeeper's uh, Spy, and just stuff like that in general. And Gravekeeper's Guard and stuff. So, and then you have DD Warrior Lady for uh, removal of the monsters. So this was a good way to get it out. And then we had Magical Merchant. Magical Merchant would help dump your dark and your light monsters into the graveyard when it was flipped, allowing you to go into Chaos Sorcerer much more easily. And then lastly, for the monsters, we have Magician of Faith. Magician of Faith was uh, one of them, Then you could actually use this to be able to flip, get a spell back, and it was just very, very helpful overall. So, now let's move on to the spells and traps. So, first off, obviously, I'm only running two of the Inferno Fire Blast, because Inferno Fire Blast, since I am only having a small Red Eyes package, even though it is still a Red Eyes deck, this makes it to where you do, you'll do you deal 2,400 points of damage. Your opponent, your Red Eyes just cannot attack the turn that you activate this card. That's perfectly okay. And now, let's move on to the meat and potatoes of this deck as well. Moving on to the spells and traps. Some of the best ones in here. Oh, well, that's definitely going to be one of them. So, you're going to have, for the destruction, you've got Dark Hole, and you've got Heavy Storm. This where your uh, main destruction, uh, This card, these cards were uh, uh, limited to one, and they came off the ban list, so this was very, uh, for Dark Hole especially, so this is a very good card in the format, especially to be able to go through over your opponent. Then you had two Noblemen of Cross out, two Knock, this was to destroy any fl face down flip effect monsters and banish them, and then if they had any of them, they would have to send them, uh, they would have to banish them as well. And then you had Mystic, Mystic Space Typhoon for the other back row removal. And then, this is kind of a cheeky little card. You don't have the Delinquent Duo, but you do have Confiscation. 
Confiscation was kind of like a mini delinquent duo. You pay a thousand life points to rip a card out of their opponent's hand and send it to the graveyard, but it was just the one card. As whereas delinquent duo lets you do multiples, still a very good card. I'm glad that they at least gave us that when uh, they brought that back. And then we have Enemy Controller and Book of Moon. Uh, field presence was very important in this format, so Book of Moon and Enemy Controller were great for this. You could easily flip your opponent face down, you could switch it to defense mode, you could take control of it, kind of like brain control and everything, and so on and so forth. And then lastly for the spells, we just have a Premature Burial, because Premature Burial was so good, and this, especially by discarding a card and sending it to the graveyard and stuff, or if it gets sent to the graveyard, you can actually pay 800 life points to be able to bring it back. So that's going to be it for these spells. Let's move on to the traps. All right, so now we have... Three copies, obviously, of some of the best trap. Sakretsu Armor. Sakretsu Armor is utterly amazing because this allows you to destroy the attacking monster. And uh, this is one of the main battle traps in this format. Uh, that's why we don't have Mirror Force or Ring of Destruction anymore. And then we have the one of, which is Magic Cylinder. We have one of the Torrential Tribute because Torrential Tribute was uh, still legal at the time. We have one of Bottomless Trap Hole, which Bottomless Trap Hole is still very good. It gets it destroys Chaos Sorcerer especially, which is the main purpose. We've got one Call of the Haunted. And then lastly, we have two copies of Dust Tornado because back row was still important. was very important. So you want to get rid of that passkey back row so you can go into and activate Spirit Reaper's effect to do direct damage and not have to worry about anything. And then being able to start discarding cards from out of your opponent's hand. So, all right. So that's going to be it for this deck profile. I hope you guys enjoy it. This is actually very fun for me. I'm going to be doing this. I'm going to be doing this and I'm going to be showing you my Cybernetic Revolution page, which is actually, uh, I'm going to be showcasing that for you right now. So these were the cards that came out during the time. I don't know if you'll be able to see it. So you've got Cyber Dragon. I've got three copies. These from Cybernetic Revolution. We've got Cyber Twin Dragon from here, which uh, was the main fusion monster, Cyber End Dragon, and then Power Bond. So as well, Cyber Dragon, Vecroid, and then a more elemental here support were mainly what was in the set. And like I said, it was definitely a revolution of sorts because you had so many different you know, new archetypes that was going to be starting to come out and just all in all made the game a lot more faster, but also a lot more fair because now you got completely rid of all that stuff that you had in the Go format. So, all right, so that's going to be it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and stay tuned for my next video, which I will be discussing elemental energy that came out in November of 2005. So once again, thank you so much. And with that, I'll see you guys next time. Later.